Hi, I'm Lauren Seidel-Baker, an economist here at ITR Economics, and I am so excited to present to you today Tools for Seeing the Future. This is our methodology, the fundamental basis, how we calculate our, our forecast and really how we look at any indicator, be it your business or something bigger, gross domestic product, industrial production, a, a major sector of the economy. But I'd like to look at this information today as if it was a business. So I'll call this my business, Lauren Incorporated. I probably have a sense of my sales. I should be tracking that on a monthly basis, but there's a really interesting story going on behind the scenes. And it's our job to get at that story, to see what's really happening here that's not easily uh, discernible at first glance. So let's do a few things to manipulate this data. I promise there's no high level math. This is simple calculations. We're going to start just by getting a smoothed out version of what's going on in my monthly sales data. So I'll do that first by calculating a three month moving total or three MMT as I have abbreviated here. This is just a very simple sum. I'll take my past three months of sales data, add them together, and that gives me a quarterly idea of how much have I sold or uh, what should I be uh, looking at on a, a smoothed out version? None of that month to month volatility where some sales could maybe get pulled into a month or pushed out to another. But I don't want to stop there. Once I have this monthly total, I can calculate my first rate of change. I call that a three over 12 rate of change. The three stands for three months of data and over 12 means I'm always comparing back 12 months or one year. So in this example, I'll take my March 2021 three month moving total and I'll compare it back to the March 2020 3 MMT. This tells me that it, again, if this is my business, I sold 9.5% more in the last three months than I did in the same three months one year ago. Now I'm always going back one year. There are a few reasons for that. The most important of which is I take out any seasonality. A lot of folks ask, is this uh, methodology, does it still work if my business is seasonal, if I have a busy season and a slow season? And it absolutely does because we're always looking back to the same three months. So I'm comparing busy season to busy season or slow season to slow season, and I'm getting a more apples to apples comparison. But let's not stop here. Let's take this methodology one step further, and that's to do the same exact calculations on an annual basis. So I'll start with my 12 month moving total or 12 MMT. Um, this is again, a simple sum of the past 12 months of my data. And I hope this is something you're already calculating in your business. Uh, some folks might call it a trailing 12. I'm sure it's a metric you're familiar with, but where many businesses stop is that right here at that 12 month moving total, they don't take this methodology, that last step to calculate the 12 over 12 rate of change to get that view of what's happening annually in the business. So again, for example, if this is my data, I can see that I'm down 2.2% in the last 12 months compared to one year ago. That gives me an idea of where things stand today, but it also gives me a little bit of a track record. I can see that even though my data is below last year's level, I'm getting less and less negative. If I look back to August or September, I was down almost 5% from the year ago level. So it seems like my business is, is getting maybe not better yet, but at least less bad. Here are the formulas for those rates of change. Again, this is no high level calculus. This is just simple addition and division. Um, put this into an Excel spreadsheet and, and I really do encourage you, take this to your own business because you'll get a lot of powerful information. Now the 312 is interesting. That 1212 is probably where I spend more of my focus as an economist because that 1212 rate of change is where we determine uh, where your company is in the business cycle. So I have this stylized line that represents my 12-12 rate of change. Wherever that number is, it will always be somewhere on this line in one of these phases. Whether it's positive or negative, whether it's rising or declining, it will be in one of these four business cycle phases. So maybe it's negative and rising as my example just showed. That would be what we call phase A, a recovery phase of the business cycle. That leads to the best phase, phase B. We want to know when we make that shift. 
because we as a business should be making very different decisions if we're in, say, phase B and growth is accelerating, or maybe phase D, the recession phase of the business. We just should be behaving differently. So the first step is knowing where we are. But after that, the next step is determining what comes next. You can see that this business cycle naturally leads from one phase to the next. So we want to be looking not just at where we stand today, but at what comes next, what's around the corner. That's how you make the business cycle decisions to outperform during any phase of the cycle. Now we can use these rates of change to, to start to get a glimpse, not just of where we are today and not just of what phase should come next, but really we can peek around the corner just a little bit more. So I want to show you a, a sample data series here. This uh, isn't a real company, but um, it could be. And I've cut the chart off here in, in mid-2006. So bring yourself back mentally to 2006 when things probably felt pretty good if you were in business at the time. I know it was a while ago, but we'll try to remember back. 2006, um, iPods are big. It, it was a great time. And if this is my business, I can see that my sales are rising. If I only calculate that 12 month moving total, that trailing 12, I'm probably pretty happy because I can see that my sales are at a record high, they're still rising, and I probably feel great. But if I'm calculating my rates of change as well, um, here I have that 312 graphed in orange and the 1212 in blue, I'm going to get a better peek around the corner than many of my competitors. 2006, we're feeling good. Fast forward to 2007, we're feeling even better. And if I'm following the rates of change, maybe I'm not feeling better. Even though my sales 12 MMT is at a record high, I have a powerful red flag waving from my own data. I haven't done any forecasting here, anything beyond that simple methodology, that easy math that I just showed you. But I can see that my 312 is now declining and critically it has downward passed my 1212. When I see those two lines cross, that is a, a blazing caution signal to me. Because that 312, it shows the much more immediate momentum. It shows that my business maybe isn't in that ongoing, rising, accelerating trend for much longer. And in fact, I hope I heeded that warning because my sales, in fact, do drop off in 2008, 2009. Now, if I'm following the rates of change, I would have watched that 312 lead the 1212 the whole way down to the trough here in 2009. And I would have seen there is ongoing pain coming. I would know that at least for the next couple of quarters, we're not at the bottom yet. We need to be taking those you know, good management decisions, being cautious, uh, maybe it's watching costs, whatever it is that we're doing at the time to set ourselves up because we might not be able to change the overall economic cycle, but we certainly can respond to it. Let's fast forward again. Here it is, early 2010. And uh, if you were in business at the time, things didn't feel so great. Um, you were probably a little bit more pessimistic. I know the headlines certainly were. It, it seemed like the sky was falling and there just was no bottom to be seen. I can see that in my sales 12 MMT on the bottom here. But again, if I'm watching my rates of change, this is when I get my positive signal. This is a green flag waving because my orange line, my three, uh, 312 rate of change has now upward past the 1212. That's a signal for me that I need to be investing. I need capacity, I need people, I need equipment, whatever it is that my business needs to be ready to hit the ground running because this rate of change signature from my own data tells me that growth is just around the corner. And sure enough, it was in this case, if you had been following your rates of change, you would have known that ahead of time. We follow these rates of change through the upside, through the downside. It's a great peek around the corner at what's coming next for your business and how you can plan for it. Once we've calculated our rates of change, once we know where we are and maybe have a little peek around the corner at what's coming next, the critical next step is to look at leading economic indicators. We can know where we are in a business cycle, but if we can't plan too far into the future, it might not help us all that much. So I want to show you a, a sample industry data. That's this blue line. That is my 12-12 rate of change, or my annual growth rate in the, the data that I care about. And I found a great leading indicator for this industry data. That's the green line. Now, this one is our ITR leading indicator. That's our proprietary metric. But we have about 10,000 different indicators in our database from all kinds of different sources. Chances are some of them will uh, comp well to your data as well.
But for argument's sake, let's look at this ITR leading indicator. And I like this as an indicator for several reasons. First of all, these two lines tend to correlate very well. The green line, it, it matches up to the blue line, which is the one I want to know more about. But critically, there's a little bit of a timing difference. I can see that the peak of the leading indicator, it happens before the peak in the industry data. The trough, it happened before the trough in the industry data. There's a bit of a timing mismatch here in the cycle. And I can calculate the average gap from peak to peak, from trough to trough throughout these various business cycles. In this case, it's about a year. So what I can do is hold my industry data, the line I want to know about, I'll hold that steady on this chart, and I'm just gonna shift that green line out 12 months into the future. Now, first of all, we have a much better correlation. The peaks align, the troughs align. Uh, the correlation between these two lines is much closer. But critically, I have a 12-month glimpse into my future. Based on this very strong relationship in the past, if I believe that relationship will hold in the future, I can see what that might mean for my blue line. In this case, I can see the blue line is still declining. This industry is still in phase D recession. We haven't reached the bottom yet. The indicator though, it has. I see a trough in that green line. And if I know what month that came in, I can just add 12 months to it and that will give me a sense of when I should expect the bottom and critically, when I should be looking ahead for phase A and phase B, which has now occurred in the, the leading indicator. And that means growth is ahead. I can be confident that that growth will be coming to me. And this helps me determine exactly when I should act. Now, we don't ever want to hang our hat on just one leading indicator. That ITR leading indicator is one of my favorites. But as I mentioned before, we have about 10,000 different indicators in the database. And many of them comp very well to the industrial economy. So if that's what I want to know about, US Industrial Production Index, that's my blue line. I'm showing you uh, the diamond points at the far side of this chart. Those are our forecasts for the US industrial economy in the next couple of years. And the reason we have so much faith in that forecast, the reason we think this little tick up that you can barely see at the bottom of that current cycle, that technically phase A, but very nascent phase A trend, is due to the leading indicator evidence. So the first one I'll add on is that same one we just looked at, our ITR leading indicator. It's orange on this chart. But you can see the great comp between these two lines, the great correlation, really supportive evidence that that ITR leading indicator, it is now in phase B. It is showing further growth ahead, really matching very well with my expectations. The US Purchasing Managers Index, another fantastic leading indicator. Now this one has already started to maybe waver at the top. So we have such a long lead time on this PMI that we can see not only the confirmation of that current low, but also potentially that next high. We're waiting to confirm that this is the high, but it, it seems likely right now. And that would again confirm when we expect that next peak in the cycle to come. In this case, it should be around the first half of 2022. That's when we have that forecast for the highest growth rate. Next leading indicator I'll add, this is uh, coming from the stock market. This is the Wilshire total market cap. Again, we see that, that low, we see that ongoing rise. No decline yet, so still good news from the, the outer view of this indicator. Um, and finally, I have a more globally facing indicator. This is the JP Morgan indicator. And here as well, the rest of the world showing that that low is very likely to hold. This rise, this recovery and rising trend is likely to be very sustainable from here. This is a list of a dozen or so of the top leading indicators that we like to use for the, the US industrial economy. As you can see, some of them have turned to decline, but with that lead time naturally built into that economic relationship, um, the four at least so far that have turned are all showing that the peak of the cycle will likely come early next year in early 2022. At that point, our economy is expected to enter another slowing growth trend. But let me be clear, decline does not mean recession. It just means decline in the growth rate. So our economy will still be growing, just growing at a slower and slowing pace. Overall, that's what makes ITR so good at what we do. This methodology is tried and tested. We have been using it for decades, and it performs very, very well throughout normal economic cycles.
You might ask, does it also perform in abnormal times like we find ourselves in now in the aftermath of this pandemic induced recession? And the answer is yes. This is a uh, scorecard, if you will. I, I think of this as our report card about how close our forecasts were to reality. Uh, rewind mentally, the, the dates on these forecasts are March of 2020. So those first couple of weeks of uncertainty when things started to go wrong, things were shutting down, we were all running home to work remotely, and we at ITR said we probably need to be doing some reforecasting. So these are the dates that we put each of these forecasts into place um, for just a few of the, the big sectors, GDP, industrial production, etc. Uh, in some cases, we didn't even have actual data from 2020. You can see that GDP data lags a little bit. Our most recent data at the time was still from 2019. But by year end 2020, so with a duration of nine months, you can see our accuracy rates on the far side. We hold ourselves to this highest standard. We will always be proactive in reporting it to you. And hopefully this gives you just a little bit more confidence that this methodology, it, it does work. There is a, a, a tried and tested um, structure here, the rates of change, the leading indicators, and that's why we have so much confidence and would encourage you to use them for your own business.